going to be here for the next three hours. And we have Paul Joseph Watson joining us to break down all the different preparations, not just in the United States, but also in Europe, for what you would call martial law, basically. So we're going to be going over all of that today. We are also going to be looking at the ongoing carnage of the Middle East and what's happening with the announcement of unlimited QE and how all that ties together. I also want to analyze the campaign propaganda going on by the Obama uh, system and the Romney system. But I tell you, you've seen Obama come out and say, you didn't build that. To all the small business people and entrepreneurs out there that go through living hell with the regulations and bureaucracy and fluoride population to try to actually build companies and operations. And I'm not a defender of Mitt Romney, but when Mitt Romney is being attacked for showing some semblance of what this republic was built on, you have to defend the ideas that are under attack. And so I will be defending uh, the so-called uh, Mother Jones secret video of him at a fundraiser. Now, it wasn't Obama in San Francisco saying, don't worry, we'll get these bitter clingers that cling to their Bibles and their guns with disdain. He was saying, look, 47% of the population is on government dole of one way or another. And he said, they're going to vote for bigger government. And there's nothing you can do about that. And he said, I'm here to represent those of you that actually produce, which isn't really true. He he represents the big global monopoly banks that also use government and all the corporate welfare to expand their empire. But his rhetoric is true, trying to get votes. So the fact that that rhetoric is under attack, the rhetoric must be defended because it's very accurate. The globalists know that once they get 50, 55 percent of the population dependent on government, they will vote to turn their guns in. They will vote to turn your guns in. They will vote to take your property. They will vote to put you in a slave camp. That happens in every communist society to produce things for them. And the system will let its welfare recipients, corporate and low level, sit there and get fat doing nothing or working in a bureaucrat job, wearing a uniform of some type, ordering you around. So this is the model we're going into. It's a hellish society. It's a terrible society. That's where we're going. And so this is basically the establishment striking back against you didn't build that uh, comments uh, of Barack Obama. So when we come back from break, we'll uh, get into that and also a lot of the other uh, top news that is being reported on right now. U.S. Embassy in Beirut destroys classified documents, prepares for protest. CIA-sponsored Taliban attack camp bastion with orders to kidnap or kill Prince Harry. Yeah, let's not forget Taliban, Al-Qaeda, all these groups stirred up, created by the globalist, who then says, give your rights up because of the thing they created. U.S. caught creating, and that is people that run our country, I should add, uh, caught creating three new computer viruses. That's connected to the Obama administration trying to pass their cybersecurity takeover. Anti-Muslim film setting the stage for October surprise and restrictions on free speech. Uh, it's all up there at Infowars.com. We mentioned this a few days ago, but it's in the New American Magazine now. Taxpayers to fund Hollywood Obamacare movie and Hollywood Obamacare propaganda interspersed in the news and TV. Yeah, I mean, you turn the television on, movies, all of it. It's just a bunch of brainwashing. Also, controversial naked airport body scanners to be scrapped or failing to receive European approval. The Daily Mail be uh, bemoans the fact they love their naked picture being taken and being microwaved. Uh, that and a lot more today and your phone calls. We'll get the number out coming up. But first, we're going to get to this so-called secret video from Mother Jones. Infowars.com. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for truth seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find at InfoWarshop.com, Non Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. 
We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. We're going to get into the giant ongoing conflagration that has been set off in the Middle East by Al-Qaeda that our criminal government publicly created in 1979 and is publicly injecting into every major country in the Middle East with their little henchmen, the Saudi Arabians. All of that is going on and taking place. This is the political distraction for the banking takeover that is unfolding. We're going to be going over what's happening in the economy today. And Paul Joseph Watson will join us in the next hour. Infowars.com, prisonblanet.com reporter. And of course, one of the anchors for Infowars Nightly News. Uh, looking at domestic preparations for collapse. You see, we've had threats of Iranian war before. We've had threats of hyperinflation before. We've had all these threats before as the world slides into this global depression that's been engineered to consolidate wealth. But now we've got all the intel of government running around, battening down the hatches, digging in, buying 1.4 billion plus rounds of ammo. Watson's got an article coming out in the next 30 minutes with even more ammo they're buying. We're going to be breaking that report. So all of this tied together really shows a perfect storm of biblical proportions. Because if there is a wider Middle East war and the Russians or Chinese are brought in over deals they have with Iran and Syria, Katie bar the door. Now, again, we can move back from the precipice just like during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1961 or other events that have taken place. But regardless, the world is in a very, very serious uh, position right now. Now, that said, I want to get into to domestic politics first here. Because when you get down to it, Obama and Romney are funded by the very same mega banks, institutions, crony capitalist, monopoly men, insiders. But... Romney is, is on the surface enough different that conservatives and libertarians are supposed to see him as the lesser of two evils. And we've had obviously endless discussions and debates about this fact. But Romney must be defended in one major respect. Because he is the synthetic, false, standard bearer for the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, free market, rugged individualism. That's what the Republican Party supposedly represents. And then it misrepresents it to give all of those great things a bad name. The media blames the crony insider garbage, the tens of trillions and banker bailouts. They blame that on capitalism when it was government teamed up with select corporations and banks that created the mess we're in right now out of their greed and hubris. So what I'm getting at here is that when Obama comes out and says, if you got a small business, you didn't build that. Government basically did. Social engineers created the system that allowed you to have this business, which at one level is, is, is partially true, but that's the collective wealth and work and intelligence of the society in concert and then a limited government working as the system to direct it. And I'm not saying that's the only way we could go, but that's been the system we've had for thousands of years. Big governments destroy things and bring things into stagnation. That's well known, maxim of history. But it is the human initiative and spark and drive and energy and competitiveness that animates the socioeconomic system. It is the taste of the public that will reflect its mind into the architecture. 
into the art, into the literature, into the style, into the manner, into the culture of the people. So the, the statement by Obama, before I get into the big Mitt Romney controversy, the statement by Obama that you didn't build that, We've played the clip at nauseum. No need to replay it here. You can look it up. Watch the whole speech. He explains. Government organized it. Government did it. And collectively, we built this. Yes, but we were collectively led by the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's always different forces in society, and no one can deny that big government, out-of-control government, has been created and fostered and supported by selective big corporate interests that don't want freedom and don't want competition and who want to shut down the family itself because any sovereignty, any allegiance not owed to the corporate Borg state gets in the way of them being able to politically rewrite us like a computer desk whenever they want. They want you mindless and doing whatever they say, a fad-driven, empty creature, a biological android. But let me just put this in simple terms, okay, and state it clearly. When Obama comes out and says you didn't build that, that is the social engineers assaulting the mind of humanity and assaulting the mind of the individual and waging war against the greatest elements of our species. Competitiveness, art, enjoying the fruits of your own labor, that is a full frontal assault on that. By the ruling class that craves, the technocratic class that craves controlling your mind, that craves controlling art, that craves dominating, R studying Eastern Germany under the communist, Russia under the communist, China under the communist, and other authoritarians, uh, the Nazis as well, they all craved controlling art and the theater and the literature, and they would make all the famous artists come to them and beg them to allow their books to be published. They would make them change things. They would make them make films. You know, Hitler constantly made every star, especially every female star, come visit him and kiss his butt if they were going to be allowed to be in the theater. That's what government's about, is these nobody thugs, these greasy scumbags of government and, and, and the corporate interests that control them, getting together and dominating society. Reveling in the domination, reveling in the control. I mean, that is such a on fire authoritarian statement by Obama to come out and say you didn't build that, and then have all the Democrats and 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 all the collectivists and all of these people who feel power through the system. Mid-level bureaucrats and high-level ones, I've met them, I've talked to them, they revel in the power. And they'll tell you, the state is behind me, you will be defeated, you will be absorbed, you know, we are the board. Resistance is futile. They are empty, pathetic people who are gang members. They're in a gang saying, we didn't build it. You know, when I paint a painting, I did build it. When my wife and I got together and had children, we did build it. She built it in her womb. When I set up InfoWars 15 years ago, I did build it. I did build it. I did put the initiative in. I did communicate. It was my drive, my impetus, reaching out with others that have like minds, interfacing together, that built what we've got here to resist the globalist. And so the statement by the collectivists that have now gotten about half the population on the dole, and dependent, not to empower them, but to enslave them. They're now saying you didn't build that because they're getting their armies ready intellectually, their bureaucrats, their controllers to come out and take everything we've got in controlled class warfare to wipe out the ultra riches elite, the middle class and nouveau riche. We're now at the precipice. Now, all of that said, when we come back, we'll play the Mitt Romney clip. And again, I'm not defending Mitt Romney himself. His voting record is clear. He's a globalist. But 
if they can attack Mitt Romney and say, how dare him say 47% are dependent and they don't care what the government does, they're going to support big government. They're going to support Obama. That's truth. And of course, Romney only says the truth with a group of upper middle class and rich donors. And that scares the system. And by the way, Romney's done the right thing. He's owned it. Romney sticks by victims comment, but calls them off the cuff. This whole liberal system isn't liberal. It's about disempowering you. It's about scaring you about what's outside the matrix, what's outside the dome city. You don't want to go up there. You want to stay down here. It's about Plato's cave. It's about keeping you on the reservation. It's about controlling you. And so now we must defend Romney because this is a fight between forces of total collectivism and slavery and centralization and those of us that understand this long train of domestication that people like Governor Romney helped create. We know Romney's a globalist, but he's, 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 he's taking the place. He's standing in the position of liberty and freedom so they can have controlled opposition. But Obama and Romney are fighting over the levers of power right now. So we have to come out and say, no, what Mitt Romney said is correct. What Mitt Romney said is right. Regardless of who's behind Mitt Romney, we cannot allow them to demonize the entrepreneurs of this country. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? The problem we have in this society is that people don't know the real definitions of things. They think there's Republican and Democrat. And the average Republican is taught all corporations are good, all mega banks are good, Walmart is good, every big organization is as pure as a driven snow, GMO is good for you no matter if it's five different species mixed together with a live pesticide that the plant grows that kills bugs that eat it. But you're supposed to be okay eating it. The mainline Republicans think everything non-government's good, everything government's bad. Democrats think everything government is good and that collectivism and basically socialism is the way to go. They, they tell you, oh, England is so great, we're going to have health care like they have. And you're like, it's absolutely hellish. Do you know anything about it? I mean, you, I mean, two year, year and a half waiting lines for basic surgeries, people dying in mass. I mean, I can show you C-SPAN, their own parliament, admitting it. And they're like, no, no, you're a liar. You're a right winger. So overall, the Democrats, on average, are very naive, childlike weirdos. So I generally, intellectually, would find myself more of what they call right wing. The problem is the right wing are a bunch of naive fools as well. Because they don't understand that the big six mega banks on record are the ones financing the Nature Conservancy and Sierra Club to take over private property. They're the ones financing the carbon taxes that wrote up the plan. They're the ones that want a corporate hostile takeover. And they're using government to do it. They're using government force through the EU and the national security state in the United States and England to set up a planetary corporate government that openly says your family and your future is serfdom, if you're lucky. So if people don't get smart and get wise to how the real world works, we don't have a future, ladies and gentlemen. And it's so frustrating to, to now be at the point where these corporatists who said over 100 years ago in National Banking Association publications, you name it, we've read them on air. You know, we've got to take over education. We've got to dumb people down. We've got to reduce the vocabulary. Americans are too smart. They're too savvy. They don't trust the system. Uh, this is the robber barons over 100 years ago saying we want to take over completely. And they were being defeated at that time. People were waking up to them. And so they developed all the different programs you see today to domesticate you. They take the middle class's money, give it to the poor people, domesticate them, grow the number of poor people, dumb them down, and then use them to become the bureaucratic force to then take the rest of the wealth 
of what's left while the globalists exempt themselves from all the taxes and all the regulations. They think the public is so stupid that they go on the news, CNN, ABC, you name it, and say, Warren Buffett doesn't pay many taxes. Hey, his secretary pays a higher percentage, which is all true because Warren Buffett helped write the laws in the 80s and 90s to do it. Bill Clinton got rid of Glass-Steagall to allow all this to take place. And then Bush continued it, and then Obama continued it. This has all been charted out, and, and, and you sit here and you talk to adults, and they have no idea how the world really works. It's so frightening. I don't get some uppity feeling whenever uh, I talk to executives and people, and they're ignorant. It scares me. Because if, I, if, if little Alex Jones knows more than most people, even people worth billions of dollars I've had a chance to meet, my God, we're in trouble. That's all I can tell you, because the way the world works is right there, ladies and gentlemen. You got special interest running big government to domesticate society and shut down their competition, period. And if Republicans don't get that through their brains, there goes all the prosperity and there goes the freedom. People ask, who do I work for? Who am I with? What do I stand for? I talk to so many bureaucrats, so many spies, so many agents, so many corporate people, and they say, who do you really work for? You couldn't have done this on your own. Where did you come from? And I always tell them, don't you understand there's some people in this world who don't have to go work through some system to become successful. They become successful because they have ideas that are popular and ideas that make sense. When I come back, I'm going to get into Mitt Romney and this so-called scandal. And I'm not bragging about myself here. When you're in a lie, that's all you see. When you've got your head in a bag, all you see is the bag. Pull the bag off. Take the blinders off. Get out of the box. Come out of the cave. Come out of the matrix. Take the red pill. Whatever the analogy is, it's all right there. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com. And your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. Mitt Romney, funded by Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, the same people financing Obama, who themselves uh, capitalized, J.P. Morgan especially, off of running the National Food Stamp Program, and who promote and, and, and lobby in government for more dependency, he told the truth privately. You know, I, I wish Mitt Romney would say stuff like this publicly, that you got 47% of people dependent on the government. And they've shipped our jobs to China. They've put regulations on us to shut things down, to make it harder. And there are a lot of people with disabilities and problems and multi-generational welfare where I understand you're dependent now. I'm not even saying you're a bad person. But the truth is you've been made to be domesticated, just like a domesticated you know, dog. If you throw it out with coyotes, they're going to kill it and eat it. And now we are here to the point as a society where it's bad to say, hey, we don't want everybody dependent. And that's a dangerous thing when upwards of 50% become dependent, they will vote in a democracy to take everything the other people have. That's why uh, Benjamin Franklin said that democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. A republic is completely different. You have absolute right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, to your family, to your private property, to your body. And just because 
somebody else, if 51% vote to make you go work Sundays in work brigades, digging ditches, or, 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 or serving mint juleps to the elite uh, at their plantation, you don't have to do that. If 51% votes that uh, you've got to join their religion, whether it be Catholicism, you know, mainline Protestantism, uh, J Jewish religion, Islam, animism, whatever the case is, or, or atheism. 51% say we're an atheist country now, we're going to put you in prison. The other 49% if you don't serve us. In a republic, you have a Bill of Rights, a constitution that are the rules of the road that you cannot violate. Now they're saying, hey, you didn't build that. You didn't build that business. You didn't set that up. And so it's such a fundamental attack on society at every level to now they've got everybody on the defensive if you want to have your own business or keep any of your money. And we will go the way of France, where they've got over 85% taxes on the population, totally controlled, a giant government, bureaucrats everywhere looking into every facet of your life, but the ultra-rich are basically exempt from all their own laws. Just like General Electric and Google pay zero, most years, some years, two, three, four percent taxes. While General Electric lobbies for higher income taxes through the Federal Reserve on the general public because they get the money in corporate welfare and, co and government jobs. The government shuts down the other coal plants that GE doesn't own. And the list goes on and on. So that's where we stand. I know the general audience out there understands this, but we have to get this information out to everybody. Now, continuing here, Romney sticks by victims' comments but calls them off the cuff. Mitt Romney is sticking by his comments captured in a video at a fundraiser earlier this year in which he told donors that President Obama and his supporters are reliant on government, don't pay taxes, and believe they are victims. Yeah, what, government workers, I've seen numbers are two to one going to vote for Obama? The welfare class, it's over 90% is going to vote for Obama? And it's basically game over at that point. You see, that's why they want the 30 million illegal aliens legalized and why Obama has just legalized most of them by fiat. No law, he just did it. Was well, because the illegals get here and they go and work, but they also get fake identities that the IRS provides them, that's on record, and then go get three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In some cases, per home, hundreds of identities and hundreds of checks. That's why illegal aliens are driving around in the brand new trucks, uh, living in five, six, seven, eight, ten bedroom houses, totally rich, you know, you know from, from poor people's standards. Because they say, they say, my name's whatever you want it to be, cop. Go ahead and arrest me. The judge will let me out for ten bucks. That's on record. Police are told don't arrest illegals. If they arrest illegals in Phoenix, the feds come and start an investigation. That's happened there in the county, Maricopa County. Again, it's not that we couldn't have immigrants here, but the immigrants that came to this country and made it what it is busted their butts. Whether they were immigrants from China, who've been coming here for 200 years, never hear about them, or whether they were from Germany or Italy or Ireland or England or, or Romania, or there were African immigrants that didn't just come here as slaves. And believe me, the immigrants that were slaves that were brought here, they certainly worked hard. That's what built this country, not... A hundred plus million people on out and out welfare and food stamps. You count welfare and food stamps, it's over a hundred million. You count everybody who is dependent on government one way or another, it's over 200 million. Basically, that's why it's game over. You got 150 plus million who, who, are, who, are, who are dependent one way or the other, but over 200 million that are somewhat dependent. Romney's right, 47% plus are totally 100% dependent. You can look at the numbers different ways, but some numbers are over 50%. But over 200 million, over two thirds are somewhat dependent. But right at half are totally dependent. 
And it's come out with the IRS whistleblowers. It, it's all come out that right here in Austin, they issue millions of fake tax ID numbers that the banks just accept if you're an illegal alien. It's totally discriminatory. You walk in Bank of America, Wells Fargo, anywhere, you're an illegal alien, you get whatever you want. But you're a citizen, they treat you like crap and charge you to even have your money in their bank. Oh yeah, I, I can't find banks out there that don't charge me to even uh, business accounts that don't charge you because the money's crud. The banks have got all of our money they want, unlimited. They just use money as a way to manipulate society. They have unlimited. And they have uh, pretty much gotten their major beachhead in of dumbing the population down and getting 47% on the dole. And you've got even mainline Republicans coming out against Romney because now it's time with him playing the part, I'm not saying even consciously, for him to be the titular head, the, uh, the uh, punching bag, to say, hey, you don't say it's wrong to have 47% totally dependent. And it's game over. They will vote to take our guns. They will vote to take your children. They will vote, as uh, Rahm Emanuel, as the White House chief of staff said on C-SPAN, we're going to put you in forced work brigades. High school is going to become work brigades. They said, we're going to make you do national service in the new National Corps domestically, a group just as big and just as strong as the military. I mean, it's a total conversion to like some type of Soviet model with a bunch of offshore banks running it and sucking all the money and profit out. All over Texas where I live, but it's nationwide, every town is falling to Agenda 21 right now. They're rolling in with HUD money and UN money, and they're just signing the cities over to the UN. Elgin, you name it. We've sent Aaron Dykes to towns all around Austin. Austin's already fallen to them. They take anybody's property they want. They selectively take your property if you have a, a certified tree on it, you know, a tree bigger than, what is it, 16 inches? Uh, they're not letting you have wells. They're trying to put meters on everything. They're just taking over. They're the mafia. The colleges are turning out all the environmental assessment people. They've got a career. They're going to go defend the career they paid $150,000 for. And their career is running our lives. You know, I'm going to take my son bird hunting. And I went and got the stupid license and scanned my driver's license and everything. He wants to go hunting. It's a, it's a you know, a, a, a right that, that you know, young people have an instinct for. He's been hunting before. We're going out to our old East Texas ranch. We've had since 1830. And uh, I, I just know, no matter how deep in the woods I get, when I come out, there's going to be game wardens. And it doesn't matter how many times they come harass us, how many times I've talked to them, they're going to sit there, even if I'm not hunting, camping, got a fire, cooking food in a cookhouse, door opens, here comes 10 of them. And they don't look like the game wardens of 20 years ago. They don't act like it. They're in your face. You are seen as a lamb chop and they're a wolf. And it's just not a free country. It's not a free country. It's a joke, okay? And I love this country. We're not going to get it back unless we admit we become an authoritarian joke. Did you hear Max Kaiser yesterday? And it's true. We showed the news articles here on air. Corrections Corporations of America and, and others, there's three big companies, a few dozen smaller ones, are lobbying state legislatures to throw nonviolent offenders away, but release violent offenders. They're building new prisons everywhere. They've got a guarantee to keep them at 90% occupancy. And they've got factories built onto them. Repairing electronics, doing customer service. It's not just furniture and license plates. And it's what's shutting all the towns down around them. You think Walmart shuts your businesses down? What about a prison? Remember Tulia, Texas? I interviewed the award-winning journalist uh, from Texas Monthly uh, who broke it all down. He went and infiltrated it, you know, talked to all the people involved, and it came out that they built a prison in West Texas, and they just rounded up all the poor people, planted drugs on them, because the local town fathers actually had the contract for the prison and the hotel for visitors to the prison. So they just started... They just started arresting all the poor people in the town and putting hundreds of them in there. Tulia, Texas, you can look it up. And then even pulling over families that drove through the town and throwing drugs in their car to put them in jail. I mean, that's all this is, is the government or a bunch of spiders that run out and grab us and drag us off in the dark. And I, for one, am done with it. And we've got a bunch of dependent, snot-nosed scum that serve these foreign banks 
at every level, from the welfare to the corporate welfare to the defense contractors to the police to the bureaucrats to all of you who see us as the enemy. And I'm just so tired of it. I'm just so tired of being around it. I'm so tired of seeing it. I'm so tired of stupid people. I'm so tired of dumbed down people. I'm so tired of nobodies in their bureaucrat outfits with their with their clipboards or their uniforms that, that want you to know they got power. They want you to know you're trash. They want you to know you're their food. And I'm not your chew toy. I'm not your food. I believe in 1776. I know what our forebears went through. And let me tell you something. We're going through something a lot worse right now, and it's going to get a lot worse. And I want to tell all the bureaucrats and servants something. Your masters are going to implode everything. They're going to take your pension funds. Your good times are going to end. But you won't care because all you care about is your petty power. I understand that. And your masters know that, too, because you're cowards. You're going to go along with everything that happens in this country. The re-education camps, everything. You're going to love it because you are scum of the earth. Now, I know there are a lot of good people that work for the system and the bureaucracy and the corporate system and all the rest of it. But I'm talking to those out there that enjoy it and are proud of it. It's one thing if you work in the system and you know it's broken, you know it's dangerous, you know it's bad. But if you think it's all cute and funny and you're dumbed down to the point or we're hired as a bureaucrat because you got a 85 IQ and you just enjoy having power over people, listen, moron. This isn't what America or freedom was built on. Let's go to the Romney clip. Here's Romney, Mother Jones, Jimmy Carter's grandson reportedly filmed this and got it out. Going in to pay the thousands of dollars to be in the Mitt Romney meeting to say what those business owners, those car dealership and restaurant owners and local bank chairmen and, 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 and authors and inventors, that, that's who goes engineers, that's who goes and pays five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to sit there at different meetings with Mitt Romney. And then when Mitt Romney gets in there and they say no filming, it's so they can close the door at the fancy hotel and Mitt Romney can say, I know you're concerned about the fact that you understand that when 50 plus percent of people are on the dole, they're going to take over society and, and you're going to be robbed. And, and don't worry, I want to represent you. Well, even if he wanted to represent you, he's not going to be allowed to represent you. Because the mega banks he works for want to get rid of you. And middle class, you better get that. You're not going to save America and prosperity and freedom. And, and, and what we've built that's made all these lazy people be able to sit there on their hind ends all day. We're not going to be able to continue any of this if you don't get religion. And by get religion, if you don't figure out just how much trouble we're in. But the fact that the media is trying to go after Mitt Romney for saying 47% are dependent, so they're going to vote for the, for the dependency party, that's saying it's wrong to tell the truth. And uh, Mother Jones first put that video out, and they're very, very proud of themselves. Now, again, when you're looking at what Mitt Romney said, uh, it's not entirely true. People that either don't make enough to pay income tax, they're, you're still paying 10% or so for FICA. You're never going to get that Social Security and the other little fees and things. Your employer is having to match that, so that's money you would have gotten. So, so whatever your employer is paying you, you're actually paid a higher rate. It's just extra money goes to the government. Also, the income taxes on business, state income taxes, all the rest of it, that gets passed on in the cost of products. So all of you out there that think, oh, you're getting a free ride, you're not really getting a free ride. And by the way, once the, they have you vote liberty and freedom out of the country, once they get enough people domesticated, they always implode things after. Let the giant horde basically be involved in the takeover of society. And then you all get shut down and put in work camps. So, you know, the welfare state is going to be coming to an end very, very soon. Because uh, the bankers are just in the process of destroying this country. Then they'll just move on. That's what the globalists do. Because it's about power. It's about domination. It's about control. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. 
Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're gonna show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com, sign up as a distributor, and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. For more than 150 years, they've done it in Europe, Eastern Europe, and what is Latin America today, they've done it everywhere. They come and they loan fiat money, paper money to countries, they pay off the dictator or the oligarchs or oligarchy to not pay the money back, and the contract is signed to hand over the natural resources. And then when they don't pay it back, they don't care. They're getting real resources. It's all fiat money to begin with that's written off. But that's not good enough. You go back to the home country, England or the U.S., the empire, Germany, Dutch, Spanish, Portuguese, the different empires, French. And you say, oh, uh, it's really more than 150, but this has really intensified the last 150, 200. Oh, this is all mainline history if you just read it. It's all out there. Oh, um, we... Um, we loan to help get our colony going, uh, you know, in Paraguay or wherever it is. We load, you know, we loan them a million of this or that, or in today's numbers, you know, a billion of this or that, and they didn't pay it back. Our system's going to go bankrupt, and these banks that signed on to underwrite it are, if you don't bail us out, these bailouts have been going on for hundreds of years. They're not even bailouts. How many times has our government bailed out Mexico after they hyperinflate their currency? And all of this is another wealth transfer. I mean, it, it, they they play on the ignorance. They play on it. There's more than one way to, to rob a bank. Idiots go rob banks. Smart people go to Harvard. They get degrees. They go work for big hedge funds and big banks. And they sell fraudulent derivatives. Or they pay off the government to shut down factories that they don't own. Or coal plants they don't own. That's, that's hundreds of billions a year they're already making just in the last three years. Hundreds of billions. Look it up. Hundreds. Of, it's over 200 billion last time I checked that, that, that the, the, the select coal companies that are insiders have made since hundreds of plants have been shut down that weren't owned by them. I mean, the, the power prices everywhere are going off the chart. They're, literally, a foreign army bombing us couldn't cut off our power like this. We're being destroyed by design. And that's not just rhetoric, it's happening. We're going into a tyranny. Everybody should be upset about this. What about our children? What about being under strong men? What about being under thugs? What about living in something like that? You should all be very upset, not scared. You should be scared that they're gonna take over and win. Not scared so you shut up and let them win. Look at these economic articles. I haven't even got into them. I'll get into them after Paul Watson joins us on the geopolitical ramifications for about 40 minutes. Fed's QE infinity. By the way, I coined this last week. I remember saying QE infinity and QE unlimited. I, I'm not bragging. I just coined so much stuff that I know I said first. Of course, that's really what it is. So someone else may have actually thought of the same thing. I, I've learned a lot. A lot of times people don't plagiarize you. They... They have the same understanding. So I don't know, but it's a quote here out of CNBC. Fed's QE infinity will push gold up to 2,400, says Pro. And a bunch of the big groups are saying that. Uh, in one of the most bullish gold calls since the Federal Reserve announced a new round of easing last week, one strategist sees 36% jump, there's a whole bunch of groups saying that, to 2,400 announced by the end of 2014. The new target reflects our view that the Fed will maintain mortgage purchases until the end of 2014 and will move to buy treasuries following the end of Operation Twist this coming December, wrote Francisco Blanche, a global investment strategist with the Bank of America Merrill Lynch, in a note to clients Tuesday.
Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. (laughs) 